Tia Oro, this is Emily Eileen Harvey reporting live from the Postmaster Baths in Rotorua, a small city in the North Island of New Zealand, on May 17th, 2014. So as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful weather here. The sun is shining and hasn't rained, which is why everything's dry and none of the geysers around me are going. And it's also quite nice. It's quite warm for nearly winter in New Zealand because it's different. It's opposite from Canada. So right now Canada is going into summer, New Zealand's going into winter. Uh, it may look beautiful, but the smell is just horrible. It's sulfur is all in the air from all the geysers around me. There's a whole bunch of different chemicals and it just smells brutal. It smells like Chilliwack if you're driving along the highway, but worse. Alrighty, today we will be discussing uh, the Maori history and some aspects of the Maori culture. The Maori are the indigenous Polynesian people of New Zealand who originated from Eastern Polynesia around 1250 to 1300 CE. Uh, they formed tribe. They came here in their large waka or their large canoes. They were perfect for going on the ocean and could carry up to 100 people. They formed tribal groups and survived using their strong horticulture, and they eventually developed a deep warrior culture as well. The first Europeans came around the year 1800. In the 1840s, the British and Maori signed the Peace Treaty of Waitangi. Of course, New Zealanders do things backwards, for they signed the peace treaty first and then had disputes and battles in the 1860s over land. At this time, diseases were introduced to the Maori and nearly the whole Maori population was wiped out. In the 20th century, the Maori population began to grow once more. In the 1960s, there were several protest movements regarding Maori issues and rights. In the 2013 census, there were about 600,000 Maori in New Zealand and 120,000 in Australia. About 3% of Maori speak Te Reo Maori, or the Maori language. The Maori were an oral culture, as that they did not have a written language. They spoke using different words and gestures, sometimes portraying stories through dance. The Maori men would carve statues to portray different stories, much not unlike the North American totem poles. The Maori warrior culture was very strong as they were constantly battling the Europeans and each other. The Maori developed ways of intimidating the enemy, the most prominent being the showing of the tongue, the, the dilating of the eyes, and performing and and performing intimidating dances. This part of their culture is still very prominent in today's culture. For example, the New Zealand rugby team, the All Blacks, performs a haka dance to intimidate the enemy. So they go like, <laughs> and then they do a whole bunch of different dances that are supposed to be scary, although they are quite amusing. Alrighty, well, I'm going to get out of this rotten smell and head all over to Auckland, and from there, we will be in Samoa next week, and I will talk to you guys later. That's all for now. I'm Lee Harvey for CTB News, signing off.